Let me ask you to focus on the slides over here. Um, just to reiterate, we've said this many times, but when we're in the planning mode like we are now, uh, the most important thing to do is LU1TR2. That means get the land use patterns, the community visions figured out first, and then you do your transportation planning to help that vision come forward. So that's the proper way to do it. If you do your all your transportation design first, lay it out, and then tell these good urban designers, do what you can with that, uh, they, are, they are really hamstrung by that. So the transportation design really must be subordinate to the urban vision uh, as you move forward. Uh, in our uh, practice of, of transportation for walkable communities, we've determined that these 10 factors are important to getting the walkability up. And, uh, and this is a David Letterman countdown backwards kind of thing, all right? So street trees are important. Uh, low traffic volumes are fairly important. Sidewalks are not even in the top five. And that's a little bit of a surprise. But narrow streets are important. Uh, interconnected streets are good. Now we're getting into the top five. On-street parking is very strong for creating walkability. Some people say that that row of parked cars gives you a crash barrier so an errant vehicle won't hit a pedestrian. I don't really like to go that route. I say parking produces pedestrians. As you park, two, three, four people could get out and then move around in the walkable community and come back to that parked car because they happen to live seven miles away and they're not going to walk for seven miles. Um, lower traffic speeds. We all know from just high school physics, <clears throat> the faster the car is going if you get hit, your, your survivability is much, much uh, reduced with the increased uh, speed of the vehicle. Uh, you have to have mixed land use so you can go from one thing to the other uh, as you move around in, in, a, in a town center. Buildings have to be up to the street. You can't have six bays of parking between the street where you might park and the air-conditioned door once you get to the other end of that walk. So the buildings have to be up. But the number one is small block size. And it's not very exciting. But if you have these small blocks, then there's a higher likelihood that you'll have a different use in each one of them. That's your mixed use part. Now, it's, a good, it's a chance that the buildings will uh, front the street because there's not enough room for them to back up and get away from the street if the blocks are very small. So it's just a, the most important issue. If everything gets scraped clean, like a hurricane or something, if you have small block size, you can rebuild from that, uh, that good block size. Um, generally, we say manage the vehicle speed so the pedestrian uh, is comfortable. 25 miles per hour. Pedestrians just start to become extinct when you get to 35, 45, and 55 miles an hour. All right? Uh, and we want to park on the street. We want to bring buildings to the edge, plant some shade trees, and keep the blocks really short. Uh, here's just one example of a, of a, of a pre walkable street, and then there's the, there's the real solution. So you should move from this to this every chance you get, every chance you want to have a place you really want. Uh, here's a, uh, uh, an architect's rendering of a wonderful town, Windhurst Town Center. So that was, that was what the urban designers did, the kind of folks that are assembled in this room, and this is how it got built. Okay, using the latest in highway design standards, see the difference? That, that you could you could in, imagine enjoying yourself. And that, we clocked a red pickup truck going through there at 45 miles an hour when we were there, and I won't say where it is, all right? You gotta remember the bicycles. They're a critical part of, of the whole mix. And we like Sharos. Another rule of thumb we have is 30 miles per hour is the break point for bike lane design. Above 35 mile per hour posted speed we generally always do bike lanes at the edge of the street because you need the separation of the two vehicles, the bicycle and the motor vehicle, because the speed differential is just too great. All right, But when you get to below 30, 20, 25, 15 miles an hour, then the bicyclists can keep up fine in a short block sequence and, and it's more urban. In fact, if you try to put a bike lane in and post it at 25, you will never get 25. Because when you have a 10-foot lane and a 5-foot or 6-foot bike lane, you 
you essentially have a 16 foot wide lane. And you're always going to have people drift up to 30 and 35 on that wider lane for them to travel. So, so that's our that's our rule of thumb. Now, you have a lot of hills. If you're going uphill, you want to get the cyclists a separate lane so that they can get up the hill, and you know the cars won't be backing up behind them. So we do uphill climbing uh, bike lanes, uh, kind of like the truck passing lane that you have out in the countryside. Okay. 